A record-breaking day here in California with well over 11,000 new cases of coronavirus reported. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Marcella Lee. I'm Carlo Cicchetto. This comes as more and more young people are contracting the disease and being hospitalized with it. News 8's Richard Allen has more on the health risks even younger COVID patients face, as well as a sober warning about this coming fall and winter from the head of the CDC. Well, that's right. Here in San Diego, the median age for someone testing positive for coronavirus is only 38, with hospitalizations among young people also on the rise. These increases occurring after restaurants, bars, and other businesses across the county reopened. As this virus has hung on and affected more and more people, we're starting to see it have an impact on young adults too. In fact, here in San Diego County, the number of positive COVID cases has skyrocketed in the 20 to 49 year age range, which now makes up 58% of all cases. When you're in your 20s, you think of yourself as being invincible. But that's not always the case, according to Dr. Scott Eisman, a pulmonologist with Scripps Health. He concedes the mortality rate among younger COVID patients is lower. But it's also true that the mortality rate is not zero. Dr. Eisman points out that many younger people equate contracting coronavirus with getting the flu. But the complications of this illness are far greater. They're much longer lasting and they're far more serious. Those complications among young people extend beyond respiratory or lung issues, from cardiac problems to strokes to blood clots, even problems with the kidneys or liver. And for smokers, any respiratory complications from COVID can be even more severe. There's good evidence that that is also true for vaping. In studies tracking patients who suffered from SARS or MERS, which are also forms of the coronavirus, often they did not regain full lung capacity for a year or longer after symptoms first began. This virus seems to be much, much more aggressive than those two viruses. And a dire warning this week from the director of the CDC. I am worried. Who offered a bleak outlook for the coming months as the coronavirus pandemic persists with no vaccine at the same time that flu season ramps up. I do think the fall and the winter of 2020 and 2021 are going to be the, probably one of the most difficult times that we've experienced in American public health. And the CDC's director is urging everyone who can to get their flu vaccine this year while also continuing to take precautions like social distancing and wearing a mask. Back to you. All right, Richard, thanks. Today, 559 new cases were reported here in San Diego County out of more than 8,400 tests. That is a positive rate of 6.6%, just above the 14-day rolling average of 6.3%. The total number of cases here in the county now stands at 21,446. 12 new deaths were reported today, bringing that total to 448. Horse racing in Del Mar has been called off this weekend after 15 jockeys tested positive for COVID-19. The jockeys are now in isolation, but county health officials say others may be infected as well as part of this outbreak. Officials are allowing racing to resume at the end of the month. News 8's Lamar Abrams has more from the racetrack. That's right, horse racing this weekend is canceled, but the jockeys plan on getting back on the tracks here the following Friday. That'll be 10 days from when they tested positive for coronavirus. And if it weren't for that test, one jockey tells me he would have never suspected he had the virus. I feel great. No symptoms at all. Umberto Raspoli had just won several races in three days before testing positive for coronavirus. I just followed the test, but I was laughing because I said, well, if I'm riding so well and I have the coronavirus. How I can be good when I don't have it. <laughs> He's laughing about it now, but Rispoli isn't taking the virus or quarantine lightly. I have my wife, my, uh, my son with me. I'm separated in another room, so I try to stay away from them. He's one of 15 asymptomatic jockeys who tested positive for COVID-19 after possibly coming into contact with two jockeys who tested positive while riding at the Los Alamitos racetrack in Orange County last week. We don't really know who has it first. We did uh, some close contact investigations and some testing. County health officials say that contact tracing is still underway to determine if others are infected. 
but they've given the green light to Del Mar to resume racing as soon as the jockeys complete their quarantine by July 24th. We work with others in, in the racing industry to put these protocols in place, so no, we're very confident. Del Mar COO um, Josh Rubenstein says strict protocols are in place at the track, from social distancing to mask wearing to proper hygiene, but points out it is a very uncertain time for all sports. There's no playbook. Um, so we all we are all learning from each other. We're all rooting for each other, um, but it's a it's a very fluid situation. We're seeing that in all sports. As for Raspoli, he's monitoring his health and looking ahead to the next races. I'm wishing that these these days they're going to go early fast are going to be ready to get back obviously in the business and a reminder when racing resumes on the 24th still no public spectators are allowed here. Thank you Lamar. The San Diego County is hiring case investigators to help track the spread of coronavirus. The temporary position will focus on contact tracing. County health officials say with the growing number of cases they need more support. It is just difficult for staff to keep up, so we are bringing on more staff. And as you may or may not have heard earlier, uh, we put out a job announcement today for uh, case investigators and uh, got 300 applications after three hours of that announcement. Applications will be accepted online through Monday. More decisions today from school districts across San Diego about whether their students will be allowed back on campus in the fall. The Santee School District is among those reopening schools. The district announced today that doors will be open August 19th, but distance learning will be offered to families that choose to stay home. It will be a similar situation in the Cajon Valley School District. In fact, kids are already back on campus there as part of the Our summer job, enrichment I'll program. There are smaller classrooms, daily temperature checks and health screenings and masks are required for everyone. If we follow all the protocols, if the kids are taught as well as the parents, the teachers and the families are taught, we can do this. Meanwhile, the Chula Vista Elementary School District says when school starts there August 31st, it will be 100 percent distance learning. And that's the same for two of the state's largest school districts, Los Angeles Unified and San Diego Unified. Today, California's Superintendent of Public Instruction, Tony Thurmond, applauded their decision to not reopen amid rising coronavirus cases. But Thurmond said online isn't the best decision for all districts. He says in counties where cases are low, schools could reopen as long as they follow the state's guidance on physical distancing and wearing face coverings. A 19 year old woman is dead after being shot in Mountain View. San Diego police say the woman was killed in an apartment on Imperial Avenue just before 430 this afternoon. She died there at the scene. No word tonight on her identity or a description of the shooter. Police have not taken anyone into custody at this point. Investigators are working to determine a motive. New video tonight of Oceanside police tasing a suspect before arresting him is raising questions about the use of force. Stay back! Stay back! This happened yesterday. Officers were responding to reports of a man armed with a knife who was trying to carjack multiple people and slashed one person's hand. Video from police and a witness shows the suspect, David Avila, standing with both arms on his head and surrounded by officers when one of them tased him. You see him drop to the ground and you can hear an officer say he has Avila's knife. It is not clear whether or not the suspect was still armed when he was tased. Oceanside's police chief says the video has, quote, raised concerns and it is being investigated. Tonight we've learned that a former sheriff's deputy charged with second degree murder has been released from jail. 23 year old Aaron Russell bailed out last night after posting a $500,000 bond. Russell is charged in the shooting death of 36 year old Nicholas Bills back on May 1st. Prosecutors say Bills was unarmed and was running away from law enforcement outside San Diego Central Jail when Russell shot him in the back and killed him. A fire on board the USS Bonhomme Richard that broke out Sunday morning is still burning tonight. 
The Navy says it's a process to cool down the superstructure and flight deck in order to get more fire crews safely on board. 160 sailors and officers were aboard when the fire started. 63 suffered minor injuries, mostly heat exhaustion and smoke inhalation. All those living nearby are advised to stay indoors as much as possible and continue to wear masks to avoid the smoke. To help families impacted, the Port of San Diego is offering hotel vouchers. In order to qualify, individuals must live in certain zip codes. The information is on your screen. Priority will be given to those with respiratory problems. Call 211 tomorrow afternoon to learn more. San Diego Pride festivities continue tonight with a colorful show of support. St. Paul's Episcopal Cathedral was lit up in the colors of the rainbow as part of the interfaith pride service, which was online this year. It included readings from several interfaith leaders, as well as performances from the San Diego men's, women's and pride queer youth choruses.